Greetings, traveler. I am Sir Nox, the teller of tales. Would you like to hear one? Well, this one is called, Our DM Sexually Harassed Me and Fellow Players. Why am I not surprised? We had been playing with this DM for about a year now, and things were going well for the first few months. He was running the Sunless Citadel with some homebrew added. I was playing a bisexual Dehampia fighter warlock. I am known for making sexual innuendos in many of the games I play, but these are in character, and I get consent from my fellow players. The DM introduces a DMPC that had a romantic interest in my character. I roleplayed into it as I didn't see the issue with it. In hindsight, this was the beginning of the end of a normal D&D 5th edition game. A few sessions later, he sent me out of the blue a picture of his wiener. I didn't ask for it, and I definitely didn't consent to it. I was polite and told him that I wasn't into men in real life. I've never had to deal with this in my life, and I sort of froze and went along with it. Over the next 30 minutes, he sent very descriptive language on how he wanted to smash me. I just went along with it. After he blew his load and he told me, I felt dirty. Like, super weird. I kept pacing up and down my hallway. I wanted to leave the campaign there and then, but I didn't want to let the other party members down. He continued to flirt with me in game with his DMPC and out of game over Discord DMs. He sent so many pictures of himself naked. I felt gross the entire time. I am straight, but I think anyone would be uncomfortable in this situation. He wasn't a good DM either. We were pigeonholed into a railway homebrew campaign that focused on the DMPCs and a disjointed storyline. After a few months, I lost player agency through homebrew items that linked me to my in-game boyfriend, aka the DMPC. After about eight months of much of the same, I was talking with a fellow player when the DM didn't show up for a game. I found out the DM tried to do the same thing to them, but they deflected his advances. It felt so good telling someone else after months of keeping it to myself. We found out that another player was in a similar situation as me. We decided to tell the other two players and thankfully they were not being harassed. We hatched a plan to talk with the DM. When our next session started, I just couldn't hold in the anger anymore. I told him in no uncertain terms that what he did to me and my fellow players was wrong, that I was leaving the game and so was the rest of us, and that he should seek help before considering running another game with people again. He just said okay and deleted his server and game. He mentioned in the past he had trouble with completing games and now I can see why that is. As terrible as that DM sounds and as weird as it is to send unsolicited dick pics, Why did you go along with it? Maybe there's a whole sense of psychology that I'm not aware of, like, I don't know, maybe you felt trapped, or I'm sure there might be some explanation, but the fact that you went along until he blew his load and did it for months sounds a bit misleading to the DM. I'm not sure what to expect from that if someone sends you unsolicited unsolicited dick pics and then you continue to chat with them until they're able to ejaculate and then continue to do so for months, but then tell me you're uncomfortable after the fact? Something's off with that. I'm not saying you didn't feel harassed or advanced on inappropriately. Obviously, you probably did. But for future reference, if that ever happens again, you need to cut it off immediately. Don't sit there and play into it. That makes no sense. Our next tale is called, DM makes my character into a sexual abuser without my input. Yikes, what is with these stories today? Okay, so before this begins, two heads up. A big trigger warning for implied non-consensual sexual violence and self-mutilation. Duly noted. Secondly, I want to point out that the DM in question is a massive IRL friend of mine who's a good person, but sometimes when it comes to D&D, they get dicey. Okay. So this happened a few months ago at this point, but it's still really not sitting well with me and feel like sharing it. The only two characters of note are my character, Yinny, an Owlin rogue who was in the process of becoming a vampire, relevant for later, and the DM. This took place after a job in the campaign where the party ended up undoing a cult by revealing the shadow demon god as a 20-something-year-old tiefling using mostly illusion magic. We decided to spare the tiefling, who was named Keith, on the spot by DM, and we kinda did the whole thing of adopting him into the party. My character claimed him as her own since they were about the same age, and I tried to work it out as this cute little thing the character could have, and the DM went along with it too. I even had her use most of the money she earned from the job on a ring that'd keep him safely near her in the event of an emergency, 
which I tried to make as another sweet little thing to play into. This is also relevant for later. The DM went along with all of this and seemed to like it as well. So this is when things start getting bad, and also when the sexual violence stuff starts to come in. Consider this a second warning to be safe. Well, come the next session, and the party is about to head off to another job, and that's when the DM drops this lovely little description of Keith as everyone is gearing up. Paraphrasing, of course. So, uh, Keith takes off his shirt to put on another one, and his torso is fucked up. There's a ton of scars from scratches, bites, cuts, etc. He also seems to visibly wince away from Yinny. That description kind of caught everyone off guard, including me. Especially me. Now, I had made a lighthearted joke about a little bit of biting during the do, because, well, vampire. <laughs> but nothing to this degree. I literally never implied Yinny even did anything along the lines of getting rough other than the small biting joke. This was something they just said happened without even asking me a single thing first. Just whipped it out of nowhere. The party kind of stared at me, mostly in character, so I couldn't blame them, and told her off, which I just went with because I was too nervous to speak up, and I didn't know the effects this would have across the rest of the campaign. Well, fast forward to when the party has not only done the job, but it's finished with it. Keith was set off to stay with some civilians for safekeeping and was out of sight. Some context for what's next. I made an admittedly bad in retrospect comparison to the Castlevania anime, small spoiler on the next sentence or two for those that care, and the ring that Hector has put on him by Lenore, for those that are familiar with it. It was the only thing I could think up on the spot when I first described what she wanted the ring to be like, because I had watched the show and had it on my mind. I did try to mention that it wasn't meant to be a as salty as it was in the show. Warning, this is where the self-mutilation part comes in. So when the party goes back to inform the civilians everything was alright and pick Keith back up, he had grabbed a knife and cut off his own finger with the ring on it when we returned, again taking a note from the anime and twisting the ring to be much more creepy and controlling than I ever wanted it to be. The DM also added the nice detail that it apparently suppressed his magic completely, a detail I never even mentioned. Keith still stayed with the party after this, but always hung around other party members and was genuinely traumatized by my character, backing away whenever she was so much as walked near him. The party also kind of became more hostile to Yinny after all, which being fair, I don't judge them for at all, since in character, as far as they knew, Yinny straight up was assaulting the NPC and attacking him since the implications the DM gave with the ring were that things weren't consensual. Hell, I'm impressed that's all the party did. Oh yeah, Keith being traumatized by Yinny lasted the entire several month long campaign and this happened in the third or so session. Recently too, this came up in conversation at the table recently after a game. They were joking about the event a bit and DM said something along the lines of, Yeah, he kinda enjoyed it at first, then the biting and scratching started. And I tried to go along with it, awkwardly laughing and trying to salvage this character a little bit by making a nervous joke about their safe word being Worcestershire, Worcestershire, because ha ha funny word is hard to say and that is because at least that implies they had one. Even a few months off, this still leaves a bad taste in my mouth in regards to Yinny. Whenever I consider playing as her again, this event sticks out in my mind a ton and makes me feel genuinely uncomfortable with her. Honestly, I feel like you're kinda to blame in all this. I mean, obviously, yeah, the DM created something that was weird, but you never communicated anything. You're just like the other story. It sounds like you just went along with it and then are complaining later, but it's... You should have said something. If it bothered you, you should say something. People aren't mind readers. If something makes you uncomfortable or you feel bad, you should communicate. Now, obviously, if... You have some sort of social anxiety, it might be hard for you to communicate. I understand, I'm not trying to downplay that, but you should work on it, really. You can't just vent on Reddit that you're mad that nobody read your mind and kept making you uncomfortable when you obviously said you played along with it. When you play along with things, people think that you're consenting. Now, I know that's not always the truth. Just because you go along with something doesn't mean you're always consenting mentally. But you can't blame the other people for playing into what you're giving them. You're giving them the information to play off of. I'm sure if you told them you're uncomfortable, you didn't like that, or you had a personal aside with the DM and said, you know, I don't like that this is what my character is doing to this person, and then they didn't fix it, then you have something to complain about. But you never communicated, so I don't understand. You're like a waiter that gives bad service and then complains about shitty tips. It just doesn't make sense. Anyways, that's all our tales for today. If you'd like to hear more, come back and I shall tell you some.